You notice that Lexi went forward to extinguish the Paschal candle following the reading of the Holy Gospel. Some of you may not be familiar with the uh, historical and church-wide relevance of that, especially if you've not been in the Lutheran Church for a long time. There's a reason for that, obviously. The power of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost comes upon the disciples and all those baptized in Jesus Christ. It is a reminder for us as we extinguish the candle on Pentecost Sunday that the light of Christ is no longer that which is sourced by virtue of those that are coming out to tell the word through Christ and his presence on the earth during the 40 days and then his ascension and then Pentecost, the coming of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives in you. The light of Christ is to come forth from you. Pentecost Sunday is a reminder that the Holy Spirit is alive in each of those baptized in Jesus Christ. And so the message of the gospel, the word of Jesus Christ, is to come forth from you and from me to the world around us. The way we live and the way we speak and we talk to our friends, especially those that don't know Christ as Savior and Lord, to announce and pronounce the good news of our Lord, the light of Christ alive in you. You know that old song, Uh, Don't hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine, right? Easy in here. Out there, not so easy, right? Because the world is out there ready to throw its barbs, to say its words, to, especially in today's day and age, if you're a Christian in the public square announcing the word of Christ, you're going to be laughed at, you're going to be scorned, and there are plenty of people in powerful places who are going to look at you and basically find the way to snuff you out. The light of Christ, alive in you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you are the one to fulfill your promise by sending the gift of your Holy Spirit to unite disciples of all nations in the cross and the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. By the proclaiming of the Holy Gospel, Spread this gift to the ends of the earth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. God's grace, his mercy, and his peace to you, dear brothers and sisters, in Jesus' name. Satan is a defeated enemy. Satan is a defeated enemy. No matter how much he growls, He is all bark and no bite. One little word can fell him. Jesus. Jesus. He runs at the name of Jesus. Praise be the name of Jesus. It is 50 days later, and the disciples are gathered together. That's exactly what disciples of Jesus do. They gather together around the Word of God, around the sacraments, and around the prayers. Disciples of Jesus gather together because they share Jesus Christ, because they are not like the world out there, because they have been set free by the blood of the Lamb. They gather together because they too have been resurrected, born again, born from above, born of God by faith in his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. They are free, free of sin, free of the devil's reign, and free from the fear of death. Thus freely they join themselves to the apostles' doctrine, to the teaching of the Holy Scriptures, to the koinonia, the fellowship, and the bond of brotherhood and sisterhood in Christ, and to the passion of God for them and for the whole world. Joined to Christ, joined together, they find themselves in a room in Jerusalem. It is 50 days since our Lord's resurrection, 10 days since his ascension into heaven. The Son has returned to the Father with victory and triumph in his hands. He has taken captivity captive and now sends his promised paraclete, the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, the living God, come in the person of the Spirit. And as the text of Scripture says in Acts chapter 2, profoundly to us today, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing of a mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. 
Then there appeared on them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each one of them. As they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Holy Spirit gave them utterance. Now from the loftiest castle of heaven comes the Holy Spirit of God. God the Holy Spirit come upon the disciples. He comes to destroy the deceit and the treachery of the devil and to cleanse that which the devil has soiled. He comes to wash and regenerate and save through the resurrection of Jesus the Christ. He comes with the power from on high for those who have been ordained to preach the word of God. He comes to establish the reign of God and to chase Satan's legions into retreat. He comes to do battle with a two-edged sword, to slay the hearts of the wicked and to heal the penitent and the merciful by granting mercy and forgiveness of Christ. His descent is our blessing, for the word of God is proclaimed And we are able to hear the wonderful works of God for us and for all who are afar, according to the Scriptures. But we ask the good Lutheran question, asked right in the middle of the text. What does this mean? What must we do? Is this for real? Or are these men drunk with new wine, as the Scripture asks, by given of the audience there? Now, carnal man, or one of the flesh, cannot understand these things because these things are spiritually discerned. Humanity is born without the Holy Spirit, thus the need to be born again, born from above, born of God. That is where you and I once were. That is where the world is today. For we were blind, dead, and enemies to God, children of wrath, as St. Paul says. We were dead in our sins. We were dead in our trespasses. Being dead, we could not perceive any other way than the life we'd been living. We were dead. Dead is all we knew. Dead and death is all the world knows today. Thus, the world is locked, trapped, and oppressed by death. Only take a strong look around you today. Read the headlines of the news today, and you will know the world is trapped in this kind of death. Death is the wages of sin. Sin is a result of the fall. The fall happened because the devil entered the serpent and tempted Adam and Eve. Everything that is wrong with us, with our world, with our life and our lives, goes back to this original sin, to this temptation, to our enemy, the devil, and he tries to prowl around, grabbing anyone that he can. Falling into sin, humanity died. Humanity made the decision to switch sides, to choose oppression over liberty. Adam believed the serpent's word and doubted God's word. Thus, Adam and all of Adam's descendants have sinned. Sinning, they fell. Falling, they died. Dying, they became captive to the prince of this world. Captive to sin, captive to death, captive to the devil, and humanity gorged itself on itself. Looks kind of familiar out there today, doesn't it? This is our human nature, our fallenness, our ancestry. There is no hope in such things. There is no hope in our strength. There is no hope in our merits. There is no hope for us if we are to live in the way we live, by nature sinful and unclean, for we are just that. We have sinned against God in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved right. We have not worshipped right. We have not done right. We have failed. We know we failed, but we don't know the answer. We don't know the way. We don't know how to be saved. We are must be told. We have to be awakened. We have to be resurrected and given the Holy Spirit, for these things are spiritually discerned. Thus, we ask the question again, what does this mean? What must we do? But more importantly, most importantly, we must listen to God's answer. We must lend our ears 
and our hearts to the Holy Spirit-filled Word of God that directs us to Jesus the Christ. For Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil. His whole ministry was a one of invasion. Jesus, invasion into enemy territory. Invasion into the world of the prince of the power of the air. Born of a virgin. Born without sin. Born to set the captives free. Our Savior took upon himself the wages of our sin and confronted the evil ruler of this world. With one little word, he felled Satan at every turn. Ekbalo is the word in Holy Scripture. It's a Greek word. Ekbalo means to cast out, ouster, get out, get out. You have no power here. Casting Satan out, he, Jesus, sets souls free. He forgives sins. He restores broken flesh. He gave life back to the dead. He healed and fed and nourished and welcomed and blessed and taught all the while that he made his way to the cross. He faced the legions of hell for our righteousness. He endured the wrath of God for sin, yours and mine. He suffered at the hands of a rebellious creation. He hung on the tree and became himself a curse. He shed his blood and he died. Our King and our Lord of Sabaoth, the one whom angels worship and adore, singing, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, Lord of hosts, Lord of the armies, of all that is good and glorious, he offered himself in our place, in your place to defeat the works of the devil and bring to nothing the works that you and I so often are tempted to trust in these days. Thus Jesus invaded the realm of sin. He invaded the realm of sin, death, and the devil, even hell itself, to ravage and plunder the enemy's fortress, to bind up the strong man, to steal away those who had been imprisoned by deceit and treachery, and immorality, and hatred. Our mighty Captain Jesus died for us, and he rose for us. The God of Sabaoth, through seemingly, although seemingly defeated upon the cross, three days later, rose from the dead, casting off the shackles of hell, and bursting free from the tomb. For God raised him up, having loosed the pains of death, because it is not possible that he should be held by it. Thus he has proven himself, proven himself to be king of kings, lord of lords, and the king of all kings, the lord of all lords. As such, Jesus, Jesus reigns upon the earth. Jesus reigns upon the earth with mercy and with love and forgiveness and righteousness and peace. The devil is but a phony. A phony, an imposter, a poser, a mutinous charlatan. Jesus is your true king. Jesus, baptized children of Christ, is your true king. Thus Peter and all the apostles can boldly, through the power and the might of the Holy Spirit, preach Jesus to all the nations. As the Holy Scripture says in Acts today, this Jesus, whom you crucified, God has made both Lord and Christ. What shall we do? The people ask the disciples as they preach. What shall we do? Repent. Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are afar off as many as the Lord our God will call. There is nothing for you to do. There is nothing for you to do, but much for you to receive. Much for you to receive. Thus receiving holy baptism, the Holy Spirit descends from the loftiest castle and takes his place in your heart and your lives. 
receiving holy baptism, the devil is chased away with his tail tucked between his legs. He is in fear. He's trembling and he's groaning as a conquered enemy. This is the Lord Jesus doing. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. For our God has seen fit to use such humble and simple means. He comes to us and he makes his home in our hearts and in our lives. He comes to us and washes away our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. He gifts us with the Holy Spirit and the passion of his son Jesus. For as many as have been baptized have been baptized into Christ's death and baptized into Christ's death, we are joined in his resurrection. What is Jesus Christ's, what belongs to him, is now ours through grace, through faith. We are clothed in Jesus Christ's righteousness. Our robes have been made white in the blood of the Lamb, who though appearing to be slain, is risen and reigns over all creation, over sin, over death, and over the devil. Thus, every one of us may boldly sing that beautiful hymn that's in our hymnal, number 594. This verse, hear it well. Satan, hear this proclamation. I am baptized into Christ. Drop your ugly accusation. I am not so soon enticed. Now to the font I have traveled. All your might has come unraveled. And against your tyranny... God, my Lord, unites with me. Therefore, beloved in Jesus' name, heed the apostles' word this day. Heed the apostles' word. Repent. Repent and be baptized. Recall for yourselves the promises of God made in your holy baptism. Then gather, gather with your fellow disciples Join together in the hearing of God's word. As the Holy Scripture says in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but let us encourage one another as all the more you see that day approaching. This is what disciples of Jesus Christ do. They gather together. They sing. They pray. They receive the gifts of God and cling to Jesus Christ. This is the work of the Holy Spirit in you and for you as he works to create a new heart within you to give you the joy of salvation and the power of his love. For we have not been given a spirit of fear or timidity, but we've been given the spirit of power and love and of sound mind that the enemy shall not overcome us. The enemy shall not torment us. The enemy shall not oppress us. Jesus Christ has given to us his Holy Spirit, his word, his baptism, his glorious supper, body given and blood shed. He has delighted to dwell near us and in us, for he is for us. Thus, his kingdom marches on with every sermon. The enemy is forced to take flight with every celebration of holy baptism. And the serpent must cower and fall before those bearing the body and blood of Jesus Christ, the resurrected lamb, on their lips and in their mouths. Thus, Jesus' victory is for you. For you. Therefore, we can boldly proclaim with the hymn writer, Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. Christ, the royal master, leads against the foe. Forward into battle, see his banners go. Onward, Christian soldiers, marching as to war, with the cross of Jesus going on before. That power of the Holy Spirit resides in you. Rise up, church. Rise up. And proclaim the name of Christ, your Savior, who will never leave you and never forsake you. Amen. Almighty God, who has given to us the power of the Holy Spirit, raise us up with new voices and new hearts that we may proclaim your truth to the world. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Please stand.